Hi, I'm Ed, and on this video, I'm going to show you the trick to getting a perfect bleed on your Maguro brakes. Whether you just filled the brakes up from scratch, or you just cut down the hoses, this is typically going to be the final step in the bleeding process. And then towards the end, I'm going to give you a few tips to optimize the performance of the brakes even further. All right, let's get to it. So this is what you're going to need. Of course, you need the mineral oil for your brakes. Then you need a Maguro syringe with a hole drilled at the 30ml mark a T25 to open up the bleed port and make adjustments to the lever, and a screwdriver. In my case, I'm using a T25 screwdriver. It's just more convenient that way. So before you start, make sure to push back the pistons. They're pretty easy to push back by just taking a screwdriver and pushing on the backing plate, like so. All right. Okay. The next thing you wanna do is make your lever level. You can now remove the bleed screw and set it aside. Next, fill your syringe about a third of the way. Make sure to flip it upside down and squeeze out any of the excess air before you start. Now, insert the syringe into the bleed port of the lever. Now what you want to do is hold the syringe down and pull the plunger up to create a vacuum in the system. At this point, you typically see a lot of bubbles coming out, but in my case, I've already bled these brakes. So anyway, keep pulling that plunger until you get past the hole at the 30 ml mark, at which point the system's gonna equalize, and it's gonna suck in the fluid to replace the air that was pulled out. If you feel like there's a lot of air in the system, you might wanna repeat that part two or three times. To do that, put your finger over the hole here so that when you pull the syringe out, all the fluid isn't just gonna drip on the floor. And again, push all the air out, and let's put it back in the lever and create a vacuum again. Okay, so after you've done that maybe two or three times, you can go ahead and pull the syringe out. Again, before you close the system off, make sure that the pistons are pushed all the way back. Don't try to overfill the brakes in an attempt to shorten your lever throw. It's a temporary solution that just limits how far back you can push the pistons. As soon as your pads wear down a little bit, you're gonna be back to where you started and you're gonna to have to do it again. There's an easy way to do it, and I'll get to that in a second. So anyway, once you push the pistons back, you can put the bleed screw back on. This thing is made out of plastic intentionally so you don't damage the lever body. So you don't wanna to over torque it. The way I like to do it is I just like to hold the metal part of the screwdriver, and as soon as my fingers start slipping, I stop. You can also just use a T25 bit. You really want to only do this with a light touch because the torque spec on this is a half a newton meter. So just get it flush and the rubber seal will do the rest. You can now reset your lever position and wipe everything down with a paper towel and some alcohol. Now we can test the brakes by giving it a few pulls. You're gonna to have to pull it a few times just to get the pad to contact with the rotors. After which, give it a few quick pulls to see if the bite point starts going further out. If the bite point starts going further out with each pull, it probably means there's still air in the system and you're gonna to have to repeat the process again. But if the lever pull is consistent, then you're good to go. Now I'm gonna give you some tips to optimize the performance of the brakes even further. So first things first, you wanna make sure that your rotor is perfectly centered on the calipers. The best way to do that is to just remove these pads completely so you can get a good view and just center it by eye. Next thing you wanna look for is to check if any of the pistons are lagging behind. You can always tell because there'll be slightly more of a gap on one of the pads than the rest. If that's the case, then all you have to do is obviously remove the screw, then remove the pad of the piston that's lagging behind and give the lever a half pull. And then just put the brake pad back. What happens when one of the pistons is lagging behind like that is you end up with a little bit of extra lever throw. So, if you really want to minimize how much lever throw you have in your Magura brakes, you can actually do that to all of the pads. Just one by one, pull it out, give it a half lever pull, put it back in and do it to all four. Then you're going to end up with a very short lever throw. Let's test it. Look at that. Nice and tight. This method also happens to give the same effect as overfilling the system, except it's less tedious. You don't have to deal with the oil. If you just want to shorten your bite point, just do that trick, and then you should be good to go for like a month or so before you need to do it again. 
sometimes even longer. Another thing to keep in mind is as your pads start getting thinner, for whatever reason on Magora brakes, it seems that when they get really, really thin, then the pistons don't want to push out far enough to make good contact with the, with the rotors. You end up with a lot of lever throw. So again, you can just do that trick. And even with really old worn out pads, you can make them feel like they're new. Another thing, avoid these things. These are the stock pads that come on MT5s. And no matter what I do with these things, they're never as strong as the individual pads. I could have a perfectly bedded in set of brakes, but as soon as I put one of these in, it just doesn't have the same bite and power as these individual pads. Like even this green pad that's supposed to be one step above the comfort pad is way better than the stock pads. So yeah, I think I covered everything. Hopefully you guys find this information useful and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. <laughs>